In 2007, working as a photojournalist in Afghanistan, I was shot in the chest and very nearly died. The ambush left 18 soldiers dead and 11 wounded beside me. Six months later, I went back to spend a year on the front line. I wanted to understand this war that had almost killed me. I owe my life to guys like these, helicopter-borne medics known as medevac or dust-off. When a soldier is lying wounded on the battlefield, there is only one thing that he wants to hear. Dust-off is inbound. What do we got for blood pressure? 152 over 68. Oh, you just don't see these kind of injuries anywhere except in a combat zone. All of her metatarsal bones are broken. Most of the bones in her foot and her ankle are broken. The only thing that's holding her foot together right now is just the soft tissue around the bones. This young soldier was only 23 when he flew his worst mission. She was one of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen before. And she was adorable, but she was covered in blood and dirt and it was very hard because I have a, and she might have been seven, eight years old. I have a five-year-old daughter. It's very hard dealing with kids. Once we realized that these kids were, were bad off, we threw them on the bird. Um, I took my daughter, or my sorry, uh, my girl, and my little girl was uh, five years old, and she had, um, she had, uh, her left leg was mangled. It was, there was really nothing left of it. Back on the battlefield, with the 173rd Brigade. The Pakistan border is ablaze, with fighting everywhere. Four. This base has been hit with over 150 rockets in just six months. I, I, really, I honestly don't know how to describe <laughs> uh, other than a little bit of nausea and a whole lot of adrenaline and a little bit of talking to God. <laughs> the lack of a clearly defined border has led to the US firing missiles into Pakistan. They are targeting suspected Taliban and Al Qaeda positions. It's like, it's like the Super Bowl or like, you know, Manchester United and Chelsea. <laughs> with chairs, with chairs Pretty much just out of respect for the uh, Muslim faith, we're not supposed to go in the mosque unless they're shooting from us, at us from, and then we'll go in. <laughs> when three US soldiers are killed and mutilated by Taliban fighters, the rules change. Go, 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 go. But how do you find an enemy that never shows himself? I just ask him uh, where is the Taliban. He said that uh, I haven't seen any Taliban around this area. He's never seen any Taliban. He never seen any Taliban. But the, the other shopkeeper he said I have seen the Taliban ten days ago. They were here and they uh, grabbed some stuff from the shops and they went back. They see things a lot different over here. Uh, it's very harsh, very brutal. Like yesterday, uh, we went into a village and, and pretty much we know uh, everything that we had indicated that this guy was really a bad guy. The Afghans and the police and even my interpreters, who are very intelligent people, wondered why I didn't just kill the guy. There's a certain sense that they feel that we're weak when it comes to dishing out justice in their mind. And these guys know that if they get caught, that the Taliban will just cut their heads off. I'm waiting to catch a bird to my final destination, an outpost high in the mountains. The helicopter has to offload people because the valley is too dangerous to have everyone go up where the helicopter is going to sit down. This is the front of the front line. Go, go. These Marines have been pinned down under constant fire for almost nine months. 
There's more fighting going on over here in Afghanistan than is reported. We've been shot at for the last three days. And yesterday lasted us all day long. Incoming, incoming. Contact Knuckles, contact Knuckles. You're the first reporter in eight months that I've seen up here. So that would lead me to believe that not too many people know about this little base here. And I'm sure there's tons of other little bases in Afghanistan that nobody knows about. Holy shit. You okay? As soon as I pop my head up at the binos and I start looking, they pop rounds right off at me. We got the most sophisticated equipment in the world. Helicopters with great thermals, all these sites that can see to like Jupiter and things like that. But we can't pick up on one guy who's sitting 800, 700 meters away from us, shooting at us. Even in the villages, face to face, it is difficult to tell friend from foe. So you've talked to the bad guys. That's what you just told me. You, t you have talked to the bad guys. That, no, don't say nah. That's what you just said. Now, now I have trouble believing you. Anything you tell me, I'm going to doubt now. This war has turned into a PR piece where we're too worried about the damage that we're starting to do and things like that rather than trying to kill the bad guys and get rid of them. They've been fighting in this country for years. They walk the mountains, they live in the mountains. They know everything there is about this terrain. They know where they can go, you know, the positions they can hide in that are gonna be hard for us to see. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're using the terrain that they know to their advantage. And uh, it's causing us problems. It's almost, almost like what the Russians ran into while the Russians were here. It, it pisses me off. I wish I'd see the, the little bastards. I'd like to put a, a 5.56 round between their eyeballs and take them out of the fight. So who's gaining ground in this fight? They are. <laughs>